let's move our conversation now to digital nations. And there's no place more digital than Estonia in many people's minds. And so it is my great pleasure to invite Mr. Tavi Kotka, former CIO of Estonia and founder of Proud Engineers, LLC. So Tavi, how has Estonia become such a symbol of digital nations in the world? Uh, pff, we were just lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, we have a pain. I mean, if you have a small country without too many natural resources, like you have to start operating your government and your society in a different model. And uh, I think we have reached just earlier to the point where all the countries will reach during the next decades. And the question is like how rapidly they can move forward. And I think the big difference what Estonia did was that you can't build a digital society alone. It's, it cannot be only government or it cannot be only private sector. It has to be a very strong relationship between the private sector and government to build the society together. Because without that, the people will adopt those new technologies. They don't adopt the new ways, methods like how to interact among each other or, or with the government or private sector. What have been some of the most significant outcomes um, of the digitization initiative in Estonia so far? I mean, all the governments, I think, in the world are silos. Like, so there are different ministries, different agencies, etc. Plus you have private sector, different banks, different telecoms. So silo, 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 silo. Data, 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 data. But that data doesn't talk with each other. And I think one of the success stories, and once again, in the end of the day, all the countries will reach that point. Uh, imagine that everybody and every institution is able to talk with any other institution. And like, what is the collective knowledge and power that basically can be created out of that. Uh, the societies quite quickly will reach in a situation where you have, like, you don't have questions anymore. Basically, your ability to ask right question is limited. I mean, your knowledge is, is limited. So you have more answers because you can, you can search any kind of data, you can combine any kind of data that is created in private sector or government sector because everybody is able to share and it's high quality data and you're running out from questions. So I think that's like, like one of the most interesting outcomes. When the government takes the lead in some of the innovations such as has happened in Estonia, what are some of the challenges with state-led investments in technology, if any? Uh, there obviously is, like for example, in most countries, uh, very simple things are not solved yet. Uh, let's say in UK or in US, like you have a problem uh, with unique identifiers how you connect different databases between the government and the private sector because they don't see a person in the same way. Or, I mean, uh, in, uh, this is still not so, like, for example, who is behind the device? How can I be sure that it's you who is using the device and, and signing contracts and everything? Like, so it's simple stuff, and uh, governments cannot do it alone, and the private sector cannot do it alone. So that's like one of the first things, like, you have to act together. Like, so there, I mean, if you have a digital society roadmap or something, like, it has to be supported heavily by the banks, by the telcos, by utilities, and any other large player on the market. I mean, we were talking about it earlier also in our Smart Cities panel, the importance of public-private sector cooperation. But what have some of the things um, that Estonia has done to actually make this partnership successful. Is there an example or two that you could cite? Uh, we like to call it innovation through pain. It means that uh, innovation always painful to somebody. Like, uh, so instead of asking like, would you like to do this or that, we just say like, from the 1st of December, this is now mandatory. I know it sounds like, uh, like it's a democratic society and like it sounds like, I mean, like what a fascist country. But uh, I, my country separated digitalization from politics. Mm. 
So it's an engineering question. Like, for example, if you want to combine the silos, if you want to push them to talk with each other, those are engineering problems. They are not political problems. And many countries, they just mess up with this. Like, they, they mix it with politics. So if you look at, for example, what China has achieved and what Sweden has achieved, even though they are totally different countries, from the engineering perspective, they're the same. And that's, I think, one of the key elements that countries haven't figured out and also still struggle in, in this part of the world, that like, let the engineers do the engineering stuff and let the politics do the politics. Easier said than done. True. Now, there are so many technologies that, and innovations that we've been talking about. There's AI, there's uh, cybersecurity, there's VR, AR, um, FinTech. What do you think are the ones that would have the most impact on the future? I mean, there is one phase bit before that. Uh, AI and all this like, great stuff happens mostly on silo basis. Uh, like the minister also told, like, for example, healthcare. And it's absolutely right. But there is a next level. Like, for example, how your everyday grocery uh, bag uh, in influences your life, for example, or life quality. And, and that's the future. So we will see like more and more governments like combining their data all around the society, and there, then there will be a shock. Uh, the shock will be that they understand how low quality data they actually have. And when they have the single source of truth put in place, when the silos start to talk with each other, then the quality goes up, and after that, the like, perfect AI can be built on top of that. So I think like, there is a missing link between before we start talking about like, a pure AI cross uh, cross silos, cr cross disciplines. I, mean, I think that what is interesting, Tavi, in the way you're talking is that Estonia and with under your helm as well has achieved so much that you are able to have to have a kind of bird's eye view of what has worked and what are some of the pain points. One of the things I know that's close to your heart is talent development, something that the entire world is struggling with in terms of technology, data scientists. What are some of your thoughts? What, how does Estonia think about talent development? And you personally? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, what we understood is that if you are living in a rough climate, and uh, I understand this audience very well understands the rough climate, in our case it means not plus 31, it means in average plus 5. So you have a constant winter. Uh, and uh, it means that you can't actually get physically the best people into your country. They don't like darkness, they don't like cold. So uh, one thing to do that is to connect them virtually. And I think that's the future, and many countries, also Dubai has already started to do that, that you have the digital citizenship. You can basically include people from, like, the location is not so important anymore. So it doesn't matter where you live until you are connected with my economy. So, and the future competition between the countries definitely is about like uh, who gets the best talent connected with the country. Today, the best country is US, but the future is about the virtual talent. Who gets the virtual talent to be connected with their country? So that's a challenge. And for that, you need a digital society. Very interesting. And clearly, uh, Estonia is leading the way in digital citizenship and many other ways as well. Thank you so much, Tavi, for your insights. Please join me in thanking Tavi. Thank you.